This is part 26 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using buttons in input groups. In our previous video, we have discussed using text and icons in input groups. To use text and icons in input groups, we have used input group add-on class. In this video, we'll discuss using buttons in input groups. To use a button in an input group, use input group btn class instead of input group add-on class. Let's look at a few examples now. So here is what we want to do. We want to append the search button to the input element on the right hand side as you can see here. Let's see how to do this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, we are using a radio button with an input group. So if we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. Now, to use this radio button with the input group, we have placed that radio button inside a span element with class input group add on. Now, we want to use a button with this input group. To use a button with the input group, we will use input group btn class instead of input group add on class. So, the first change that I'm going to do is change this class to input group btn. And then inside this span element, let's include a button element type is going to be button class let's use the button classes btn and btn default and the text for this button is going to be search let's save our changes and when we reload this page notice we have a button appended to the input element but we want this button to be on the right hand side so let's place this span element after the input element Let's save our changes, reload the page. Notice we get the button appended to the input element on the right hand side as expected. Let's now discuss using drop down button with an input group. The drop down button should have three actions action 1 to action 3, as you can see here. Let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, we're using a button with the input group. We want to convert this button to a button drop down. To convert the button to a button drop down, the first change that I'm going to do is in addition to these two classes, btn and btn default, I'm going to use another class and that is drop down toggle. This class is required on the trigger element, that is the element which shows or hides the drop down menu. In our example, the trigger element is the button itself. So this class drop down toggle is required on the button. In addition to this class, we also need data dash toggle attribute and the value for this is going to be drop down. This attribute is required on the trigger element to show or hide the drop down menu. And look at what the drop down button says. The text is drop down. So let's change this text right here from search to drop down. And we also want this little downward pointing arrow. To get that little downward pointing arrow, we're going to use a span element with class set to caret. Finally, we need to build the drop down menu items. To do that, we're going to use an unordered list, and the class of this element is going to be drop down menu, because that's what we are essentially building here. So the drop down menu items are going to be list items with anchor elements nested. The href attribute at the moment is pointing to a hash symbol, but it can point to any valid URL or page within your application. And the text is going to be action1. Let's make two more copies of this and change the text accordingly. Action2 and Action3. Now notice there is a little green squiggly under unordered list. And if I hover the mouse over it, look at what message we get. Element UL cannot be nested inside element span. So we are spanning this element UL inside the span element and we cannot do that. That's why we are getting that warning. So let's convert the span element to a div element. Let's see our changes. And when we reload this page, notice now we get a button drop down with the input group. And when we click on the button drop down, we see the three actions that we expect. Now, let's convert this button to a segmented button. First, let's understand what's a segmented button. With a segmented button, we have a primary action on the left, as you can see here. 
and the other actions are available as part of the drop down button on the right. So let's see how to convert this drop down button to a segmented button as you can see here. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So we already have a drop down button as part of this input group. In addition to this drop down button, we want another button. So let's include a button element. Type is going to be button class btn and btn default and the text on the button is going to be action. So let's save our changes and reload this page. Notice we get a segmented button action and then we have this drop down button here. We don't want this text on this drop down button. So let's go ahead and delete the text, save our changes reload the page. Notice now we get a segmented button. On the left we have the primary action and on the right we have the drop down button. When I click on that we get the other actions. Let's now discuss using multiple buttons with the input element. So here is what we want to do. We want to append these three buttons cut copy paste on the right hand side of the input element as you can see here. Let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, as part of this input group, we have a button and a button drop-down. We don't need this button drop-down anymore, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to make two more copies of this button. The text on the first button is going to be cut, on the second one, copy, and on the final one, paste. Let's save our changes, and when we reload this page, notice we get multiple buttons appended to the input element on the right hand side as expected. But look at the width of this text box. It's very less. To increase the width of this text box, I'm going to change the grid class here from call access 3 to call access 5, save our changes, reload the page. Notice the width increases accordingly as expected. Finally, let's see how to use icons with the multiple buttons that are appended to the input element. So here is what we want to do. We want to use icons with the buttons that are part of this input group as you can see here. These icons are glyph icons and you can find these icons right here. Here is the URL. And here are those three icons. Glyph icon align left, glyph icon align center, and glyph icon align right. To use these icons with the buttons that we have, all we have to do is replace the text with the span element and the class of the span element is going to be the name of the icon. So the name of the icon is glyph icon, glyph icon dash align left. And let's do the same thing with the other two buttons we have. So this is going to be glyph icon align center and finally this is going to be glyph icon align right. Let's save our changes and when we reload our page notice we get icons with the buttons as expected. Thank you for listening and have a great day.